Therefore, it's time for member statements. The member from Oxford. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. I'm pleased to rise today to recognize the fourth annual Carbon Oxide Awareness Week, which was created as part of my private member's bill, the Hawkins Genac Act, that requires homes with a fuel burning appliance or an attached garage to have working carbon monoxide detectors. Carbon monoxide is, is, carbon monoxide is the silent killer with no taste, smell, or color. So as a detector is the only way to know when carbon monoxide is in your home. I want to commend John Jinnak, founder of the Hawkins Jinnak Foundation and uncle of Laurie Hawkins, whose family the bill is named after. John had a vital, has been vital in increasing awareness of carbon monoxide across Canada. The Insurance Bureau of Canada also played a significant role in raising awareness through their work with John and their generous donation of detectors for fire departments across Ontario. I often hear from fire departments and families about how important this legislation is and how many lives have been saved as a result. Just recently, the Ottawa Fire Service told me about two families, including a family of six, who were saved this fall thanks to carbon monoxide detectors. I'd like to applaud the hard work of all our fire services who continue working hard to get this important message out to their communities, like the Brampton Fire Department, who will be setting up displays at local hardware stores to raise awareness. When we raise, when we raise awareness about the dangers of carbon monoxide and the importance of working, fire al uh, working alarms, lives are saved. Please check your alarms and ensure that vents and chimneys are clear and that fuel-burning appliances are serviced. Thank you very much for this, allowing me to make this important statement. Thank you. Further member statements? The member from Windsor, Tecumseh. Speaker, I may be in a bit of a conflict here, but I want to give a big shout-out today to a charity group in my riding, the Do Good Divas. They've been raising money for improvements to our local health care for the past 11 years. They've raised more than half a million dollars. And we had another fundraiser last week. It was Diva Delights, a girls' night out in Hambag Heaven. The theme this year was a continuation of Canada's 150th birthday celebration. Hundreds of purses were available on the silent auction tables, and those donated by Canadian singers, writers, actors, and athletes went into a live auction. The talented member from Bruce Gray Owen Sound traveled all the way down to Windsor to be our guest auctioneer. He's volunteered uh, his time to the Divas for the past several years, and we thank him for his generosity. My pleasure. Speaker, the money raised this year will pay for a patient lounge at the Willette campus of Windsor Regional Hospital. We'll also fund a new patient lounge and kitchen for the birthing center at the Met campus. And the Do Good Divas are buying five sleeper chairs for the dads in the maternity rooms as well. The annual event attracts a thousand women and a few good men, and a good time is had by all. So thank you to Gail, Lindsay, Vicky, and all of the Do Good Divas for everything you do to make our community a better and a healthier place to be. Here, here. Thank you. For the members, statement the member from Ottawa, Vignette. Mr. President, I'm happy to Mr. Speaker, I'm happy to celebrate uh, the hundredth uh, anniversary of uh, the Bytown Museum on the Canal Rideau Canal of Bytown Museum. So on, on October 25th, 1917, in the midst of the First World War, the Women's Canadian Historical Society, a group of women, founded the Bytown Historical Museum. This was an amazing feat during the First World War. So the museum has a, a mission to explore and share the rich history of Ottawa and its people. The museum explores Bytown, as Ottawa was known uh, earlier in earlier days, from the present to the past, and it also celebrates the Algonquin territory on which Ottawa is, is built. So uh, the, the old chair of the mayor is there, there's photos, there's paintings, and more importantly, that has a youth council made up of 15 members who age from 16 to 23, who are featured in the province of Ontario grade eight history textbook. So this year was an amazing year for uh, the museum because it digitized over 3,400 artifact records and therefore bring itself in the new century. So I want to thank uh, uh, Robin Etherington and all her team, the directors, the management, the staff, and all the volunteers and the donors and the patrons of the museum. Let's have a fabulous next century. Merci beaucoup. Best museum in all. Thank you.
The member statements. The member from Melgan, Middlesex, London. Thank you very much, Speaker. Speaker, I rise today to acknowledge the beginning of Movember. Speaker, Movember Foundation works really hard to stop men, young men, from dying too young. Every November, men around the world in Ontario let their mustaches grow out for Mo Movember. However, in addition, men and women could also participate by participating in an in a opportunity called Move where they set a distance or a goal to reach every day and either through cycling, walking, running, swimming or rowing, they work to reach and attain that goal, promoting a healthier lifestyle. Through these personal campaigns, men and of course women can raise funds and awareness for men's health, specifically the uh, Movember Foundation works on prostate and testicular cancer, men's health and suicide prevention. Uh, prostate cancer, Mr. Speaker, it's very important that, that it does affect one in seven men, and it's the most common cancer found in men in Canada. And early detection is key, and I think utilizing a member to promote that. If you're 50 and over, it's time to have that conversation with your doctor about your prostate. Through research and education, we can change the way we target health services to men to help improve their overall health. To date, the Movember Foundation has collaborated with 20 partners in 21 countries and has funded over 1,200 uh, projects. I'd like to thank the Movember Foundation for the important work they do and commit right now to growing my mustache for the entire We're month here. of November I so I can match the Speaker of the House. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. Okay, there it is. It's on record. A member of the Mustache Caucus. That's absolutely wonderful. Member Stavitz, the member from Hamilton East Stony Creek. Thank you, Speaker. Uh, this year there was a surprising article in the Stony Creek News. According to the Hamilton Children's Aid Society, this is what was said, that our city needed foster families for about three, 530 children, the foster care system in Hamilton, and Ontario needs an upgrade. There are generous people within the foster care system and their efforts should be commended, but the system is not perfect. Last week I met with uh, the Child Welfare PAC group this group is made up of former foster care children. We had a good talk, and I learned that most foster children aging out of care start off disadvantaged. Many experience low academic achievement, poverty, exposure to the criminal justice system, as well as poor health. So what is the problem here? Ontario's foster care system doesn't have the resources to guarantee that these children start on the right track. There have been issues of overcrowding and underfunding for years. I have found that the Liberals have not provided necessary funds or legislation to ensure that foster homes are all what they can be for the children we love. Liberal reforms have left questions unanswered and put strain on our foster care system. I agree with the director of the Ryerson University School of Child and Youth Care Program, Ki Aras Garbag. In response to a recent government announcement, he said, the government wants all children and youth to be safe by 2025. This means that the government knows children and youth are not safe now and is prepared to wait eight more years. The government needs to commit more funds for foster kids now. Mr. Speaker, the future of these children is at, is at stake. Thank you. For the member statements, the member from Mississauga, Arendale. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. It is a privilege to speak uh, in the legislature today about epilepsy, South Central Ontario's and also known as ESCO's new offices in Mississauga, as well as the new Caroline Cunningham Youth Center. The Youth Center was made possible by the generous donations of the Cunningham family and the Care Alive Foundation. The center has been named after Caroline Cunningham, who dedicated her life to improving the lives of people living with epilepsy. After her death in 2007, from sudden unexplained death in epilepsy, her family and friends founded Care Alive, a foundation bearing her name, which raises support and awareness for epilepsy. ESCO received an Ontario Trillium Foundation grant, GROW grant in the amount of 290,100 over two years to assist in maintaining the youth empowerment program, which positively impacts approximately 250 youth. Programs such as ESCO's summer camp initiatives help youth understand they are not alone, that having a seizure is not something that should be alienate or embarrass them while also nurturing confidence. Mr. Speaker, I want to thank ESCO and the Cunningham family for helping to establish a great research, the resource such as the Youth Center with its creation Caroline's legacy lives on and continue to inspire others, and we have a, 
in the gallery today, the family, the Cunningham family, and also the representative from the ESCO as well. So I really want to say thanks to them for the work that they have done. Thank, Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Further members' statements, the member from Nipissing. Thank you and good afternoon, Speaker. It's with pride that I rise today as the Ontario Mining Association joins us here at our legislature. I want to recognize one of the great mining companies in my riding, Cementation, which was rec recently recognized as one of Canada's safest employers for 2017. The Canada's Safest Employers Awards were launched in 2011. Uh, to cover 10 industry-specific categories, ranging from hospitality to mining and natural resources. Cementation is a mine and facilities contracting and engineering company located in North Bay. They were awarded the Gold Award in the Mining and Natural Resources category during the Canada's Safest Employers Awards Gala, hosted by Canadian Occupational Safety and Thomson Reuters last week here in Toronto. They were recognized for their five-year safety strategy, which was rolled out earlier this year and aims to uh, improve the 700 employee company's internal responsibility system and lower injury frequencies. Excellent. Last Friday, Speaker, uh, we all had the extreme pleasure of taking part in the ribbon cutting of their newest expansion uh, in the city of North Bay. Excellent. I want to send my personal congratulations to President Roy Slack and General Manager of Health and Safety Steve, Rick, Steve Rickson and all of Cementation's employees who contribute to what Steve calls the, safest, the safety culture and structure at Cementation. Thank you. Well done. Thank you. For the, members of state, the member from Ottawa South. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, it was an honour last year to join with the uh, member from Simcoe Gray and the member from Parkdale High Park in passing the Remembrance Week Act, which starts on November 5th every year. So at this time every year, all of us return to our ridings and we go to ceremonies and assemblies and other meetings and events to reflect and remember on the sacrifices that were made in our behalf. And Speaker, I'm always struck uh, by the stories that we hear that week. And I think stories are important and illustrative of the sacrifices of not only those people who served, but those people who were connected to them. So here's one story. Ordinary seaman Robert Ainsley Cavanaugh uh, was the uncle my wife never knew, uh, was the closest sibling to my mother-in-law, and quite in fact, one that she adored. So he died in August of 1942 at Dieppe. And you know, it's, uh, it, my mother-in-law, Yvonne is 96. She's not gonna be happy when she hears me say it out loud. Her memory, is not as good as it used to be. But there is one thing that she remembers, and that's her brother Ainsley. So she's got a picture of him in her room, a young Ainsley, and that picture is always there. She often speaks of him fondly and sometimes with sorrow. So war leaves very bittersweet scars on many people. This is some 85 years later. So I wanted to tell that story to honor Ainsley but also to honor my mother-in-law, Yvonne, who has uh, kept his memory alive for 85 years, despite challenges with memory. So thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. Thank you. For the member statements, the member from Perry Sound, Muskoka. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. As we approach Remembrance Day, I rise in the House to pay tribute to the men and women who have served and are currently serving with the Canadian Armed Forces. Our veterans risked their lives in defense of the freedoms, rights, and security we enjoy as Canadians. We have the solemn duty to ensure that their contributions and sacrifices are never forgotten. And I'm honoured to inform the House that high school students in my riding have taken on this duty with pride. Students from Perry Sound High School and St. Dominic Catholic Secondary School in Bracebridge travelled to France to commemorate the 100th anniversary of the Battle of Vimy Ridge. Students from Perry Sound High School honoured their experience by spearheading heading the Community Remembrance Project, which created 59 banners featuring 118 veterans. These banners will be hung annually in downtown Perry Sound, and community members contributed the names of featured veterans. The interest was overwhelming. There are hopes to expand the project so that even more local veterans can be recognized. 
The Community Remembrance Project is supported by the Royal Canadian Legion Branch 117, the Town of Perry Sound, the Museum on Tower Hill, and the Downtown Business Association. I commend all of those who brought this program into existence, especially the students from Perry Sound High School. May the memory of those who have given so much so that we can be here today in peace and security never be forgotten. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Thank you. I call members for their statements. It's